Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the off-grid cabin, the log cabin edition. So the last week we 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 did a lot of prep work in order to uh, kind of get us started on this. We we dug some holes, we set some posts, some cedar posts, and uh, we figured out the layout of exactly where the roof overhang is going to go. And that roof overhang is going to house our evaporator, which is our, our maple syrup evaporator. So in the springtime when we make maple syrup, we've got a place for it to live. So it's going to go right about there. The tail end of last video, we uh, we ended up ripping out a giant stump. It's kind of the remnants of what's there now. So we've got to do some a little bit more prep work in order to get the site ready. The last couple of days off camera, I've been collecting pine trees out of the uh, the pine forest above uh so dead standing pine i've got them ready for the mill i've just got to flatten them out and uh, and get them down here so that's uh that's probably next on the agenda but uh hopefully we can get the overhang completed it's amazing how quickly spring has sprung and it, just a few short days the leaves are popping out you've got dandelions that are popping out and you got you know pollens in the air i don't know if you guys can tell i think i have allergies or just the just excessive amount of pollen in the air. It hasn't rained in a little while, so it is getting very dry and the pollen is, is thick. You can see it accumulating on the roofs and on the cars. And anyways, we're up at the pines and this is where I took out 12 dead standing pine trees. And I don't know if you can tell at all, but uh, it doesn't look like I've done anything at all. And I've cut the tops up into like manageable pieces. I'm gonna grab the tractor probably a little bit later on and collect some, uh, collect some of the firewood just to keep it off the ground. But this is what I'm dealing with. Like, if you, if you guys, I'm gonna take a little walk through here. Like it's just, it's just an excessive amount. Like it's just dead after dead after dead. You know what? All you can do is just slowly plug at it, because otherwise, you know, you're, it's kind of overwhelming. If you look at it too long, and it's kind of, you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna go crawl into a rock. Slowly go, slowly work at it. It's kind of like a, it's a work in progress. I, I look at, I look at trees, and I think, what can I build with them? Because I don't really want to just kind of flop them on the ground and let them rot. So I kind of let them stand there until I have a use for them. I think at some point it's going to come to a head where I just can't build anything anymore and I just got to get rid of the trees. Otherwise they pose danger and whatnot. So anyways, let's uh, let's mill up those logs and get uh, get our overhang started because that's what's on the agenda for today. All right, we got our we got our surface all level. It's like you could you could park a truck in here now. It's so flat. Well, I guess you don't need really need a flat surface for a truck, but you could park one here. So we got Don Don here today. How many layer day is it today, Don? Less than one. It's a less than one. Yeah. Oh, Don's gold commando. Summer is in full swing. It's 25 degrees Celsius. It feels like just the other day it was snowing. Like, like it was like a, two weeks ago, maybe it was snowing. Like that's, that's crazy. I don't know. It's uh, the blood hasn't thinned out yet. It's still, it's still hot. So uh, we're going to go grab our, our uh, stuff we milled out, our, our joists, our ceiling joists. And uh, we're going to, we're going to chalk a line along the roof to, uh, to determine what we're going to cut off that steel, the existing steel roof in order to give our lean to, because we're going to extend it out there and uh, hope for the best. I still haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but uh, well, you think about it long enough, you come up with a plan. Well, the easiest way to cut off that roof, I figure, is with uh, with an angle grinder. So we use an angle grinder with a uh, zip cut wheel on it and uh, chalked a line all the way down the, the roof and then traced it out with a steel stud just to make sure I got the valleys. And then I use the uh, angle grinder with the zip cut wheel in order to zip all the way down and make a nice straight cut. That worked pretty good. And then we cut the ceiling joists off and then screwed the strapping that was holding the steel roof, the existing steel roof in place. So now all we got to do is reattach our ceiling joists and uh, resheet. So that should be, should be easy. Well guys, as you can see, it's coming along quite nicely. It's actually coming along nicer than I thought it could ever be. It's marrying up two very different things together using not or using natural materials in, in order to do so. So we've uh, we've added our chalk line as you can see here and uh, we've got our, our roof trusses pretty much dead on. 
So now all we gotta do is put our strapping on and we're, we're off to the races. We did add a little bit of a structural element underneath these in order to support them, but I don't have any leg screws. Imagine that, I don't have any leg screws left in my, in my inventory and uh, it's not as easy to just run out to the store and grab them. So I've got to, uh, got to see what I can find. I was thinking some, some all around, which is like strapping, I could screw, you know, strap it up there, but uh, I'll probably just kind of hold out and maybe, maybe brace it temporarily until I can find some leg screws. Cause I think that's the only way to do that. Um, Oh, the other thing would be like threaded rod and uh, and just kind of go all the way up through it and, and, and lag it together that way. I've got a couple plans for the, the front of it, which is uh, this little guy here. Imagine this guy right here, the front post that we cut off accidentally when we were building it. Now it's, it's hanging in midair holding up another piece. So we're gonna probably put an angle piece over here in order to support this that piece so it doesn't collapse because that's uh that'd be bad we got a little like we got a new tenant too we got we got a bird got a bird building a nest i wonder if it's a robin we'll let him build there he's only there for a short period of time anyways i like to i'll leave the birds what do they want to do they want to build a house there they can build a house there so as you can see it's coming along quite nicely i think we're gonna wrap it up for today but we're gonna start first thing tomorrow good news guys found some leg bolts overnight we've got three of them that should give us a good start to lag up our beam to hold up our roof. So that's, that's pretty exciting. took our strapping and we spaced it out 16 inch on center, screwed it all down in order to give us our base for our roof. We've got our Sun Tough panels. They were sent to us by Vic West, which is the roofing company. They sent us the steel and uh, included in, in, the, in the shipment is they sent us two of the polycarbonate panels. That'll give us a little bit of light in the overhang to allow us to see while we're, we're actually working on the evaporator. It installed much similar to the, to the steel roofing, but it actually says in the directions to screw in the flat on the, on the polycarbonate, probably because there's not enough, uh, there's not enough rigidity to actually support the screw. So screw on the flats and uh, I'm going to screw it sparingly because I don't really, I'm not really susceptible to, susceptible to wind load back here because it's so protected. So I'm not worried about it ripping off the roof or anything like that. I'm worried about it staying down just a little bit. So I'm going to probably screw it off sparingly. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. If you guys have never heard of Bespoke Post, it is a monthly subscription service where you sign up, put in your interests and your likes, and they tailor a box for you every single month. Oh, look at this. It's, that's pretty cool. Comes with a nice leather sheath, a paracord bracelet. That's always handy. Command a wire saw. Wire saw, that's pretty cool. That's all one box. That's gotta be worth well more than $45. That's all it costs though to order it, it's 45 bucks. $70 value per box, but it only costs $45. There is a discount code you can punch in. It's self-reliance 20. Mini Hunter Damascus steel knife. That was in my, my thing. Walnut handle. It's got a little leather sheath. Look at that. That's cool. I need a knife you can put it on your belt. That, that one is, that one's done. You can take, you can take that home with you. 
That's very nice. Thank you very much. It's beautiful. It's kind of the theme, right? So if you're interested in outdoors, you punch it outdoors and they uh, they tailor a box to you. All right, we got one more box to open. It's like my birthday, all in one. Look at, we got booze close to my birthday. It's not my birthday today, but close. Tweak your best booze by adding two new ingredients, oak and patient. Well, I've got oak. I don't have very many patients. Did you bring any booze, Don? No, I forgot my flask. Sticks inside the glass. Oh yeah, it fits right inside there. And then you wait. That's the patience part. I don't know if I got a patient. 10 days? That's the patience part. You gotta wait 10 days. You put your whiskey inside here. You put your flavoring smoked oak inside. You put your cork on. You wait 10 days and then you've got flavor. Well, it says it's up to you. But... Oh, it's up to me. Yeah. All right. They recommend 10 days. Want to check them out? You guys can look at the link. Use the coupon code Self Reliance 20 and you guys can get yourself signed up on a uh, monthly subscription to Best Book. That'll work in a pinch. I, I prefer my chainsaw, but this is this is actually really cool. It feels like I just built the world's largest recliner. It's got to be the hottest day, hottest day of the year so far, and I'm up here on a roof. Fortunately, it's not sunny, we're in the shade, so the gap between both roofs is going to be filled with uh, valley flashing. Unfortunately, we can't get valley flashing right now. It's, uh, it's in short supply and the, um, the stores aren't, uh, they're not very accessible right now. So we're gonna wait on that. Maybe I'll put something in temporarily until we can kind of get ourselves to the store and, and, and get some valley flashing because it's a big gap, water's gonna run through it. It's not a big deal right now because the walls aren't finished. So it's just a little bit more rain on the walls, but uh, in any luck, we'll get it before it starts raining and we'll just get it installed and that'll be that. So we've got the roof pretty much buttoned up. Uh, we screwed it off every second rib because it's not gonna get exposed to a lot of wind. So I'm not, uh, I'm pretty confident this is going to stay. Again, this is a Vic West roof, awesome product. I love it, easy to install. Like this is day two of the project and we've got the roof on. So it's pretty much watertight if we had our valley flashing. What you got there, Don, the battery? The battery for you. Battery for the, the last screw I ran out of battery for. Look at that screw right there. The only battery, oh, screw it in. Burp. Done. Got a couple more finishing touches. I know you guys have been wanting me to do this for a while, so let's get it done right now. If my chainsaw would start. Well, the official plan today was to install somewhat of a floor in here so we could set our evaporator on something and possibly a little deck, but I think the plan has changed due to the weather. The weather has kind of turned to hot and soggy. It's about uh, 32 degrees and like what, 90 Fahrenheit. And I've been informed that the meat birds, which are the chickens that I have, have to come to the, the off grid because they're just, the smell is unbearable. Ideally it stays cooler longer in the season and they can get uh, to their full, I guess full size, but they've, they've feathered out. They seem to be, they seem to be thriving in there. So uh, I think they're gonna go, they're gonna be moved on to their, to their chicken tractor. Now the chicken tractor, actually the story behind the chicken tractor is I've actually, that was the first thing I built when I, uh, when I first got my sawmill and it's holding up quite well. And, and it's not so much that it's hot, it's it's transitioned really, really quickly. Like the other day it was freezing, it was snowing. Just, like just the other day so yeah it looks like a robin's building a nest it must be building it early in the morning before i even wake up because i don't see it i see it fly away and then it comes back after but it's got it's got some mud up there and it's got some leaves and straw and all that sort of stuff it's making a nice little home hopefully we'll have some we'll have some baby chicks right above the door Be fortunate you guys don't have smell-o-vision because the smell in here, blah, it's, it's really bad. And we've tried with, with pine shavings and uh, then we were told straw makes it better. 
because it doesn't, I don't know, permeate the smell out. We tried both. We tried pine shavings and then straw and, and it didn't really help. I think it's just the, it's the weather. It's just like, it's 90 degrees in here. It's hot. Good weather forecast over the next two weeks. So these guys will probably thrive outside. We're gonna find out if uh, we have some contingency plan. If it does drop, uh, we'll wrap the coop with plastic or something like that in order to uh, maintain temperature. So let's get these guys in their transport crate and get them off to their uh, chicken tractor. Now that we got our chickens in our final, their final home for the next, uh, what is it, eight to 12 weeks, they're gonna be in here growing. Got to spread their wings. They got the water system all rigged up and I got a barrel behind me, which uh, I guess it's behind you guys. And it uh, feeds to the, all the, the drip waterers where the chickens kind of go up and they tap on the little, the little things so they get the water and then you just add some food. So it, it's relatively easy because you don't have to fill it up every day. You can, uh, fill it up and kind of like once a week you sort of fill the thing up and they got fresh water so anyways it's it's kind of nice for them to be in here because they can kind of forage and pick out bugs and grasses so the other thing about this this thing the special thing about this chicken tractor is that you can uh, drag it around so once it gets soiled enough around here you can just drag it to a new location so as they get bigger you have to do more frequent moves i might be allergic to chicken feathers i don't know it's the pollen's really high. It hasn't rained in a really long time, so the pollen's just kind of hanging out. The uh, These guys are all set, and uh, we're going to let them do the thing. Anyways, join me on the next one.